Artificial intelligence has taken the world by storm. And at the heart of all of this is something called a neural network. And with the advent of things like ChatGPT, I think it's quite apparent as to what their impact is. In this video, you'll be taking your first step into artificial intelligence if you haven't already, as well as some of the specialized things that it can affect. The origin of a neural network stems from brain cells or neurons in neuroscience. We can consider a neuron to have three parts, the dendrites, the soma and the axon. And in our brain there are many billions of neurons interconnected in a network. Messages are sent via electrical impulses, which come into the neuron via the connecting dendrites, passing through the soma and then exiting via the axon towards the next neuron. Connections of dendrites of one neuron to those of another can also have varying degrees of strength. An AI neural network captures this biological process mathematically. A node is the simplest building block of a neural network. Connected to this node we have inputs. These could all be individual numbers which we can label as x. A numerical output exits the node which we can label as y. Within the node, each input number is multiplied by a weight that is characteristic to this node. A bias term is then added, and the resulting number is passed through another mathematical operation called an activation function, which adds non-linearity to the network. There are many activation functions, but among the most common is the rectified linear unit. It leaves the input unchanged if it is positive, otherwise it returns zero. So that's the basic structure of a node. If we place the node beside its biological neuron counterpart, and we can clearly see the relation between the dendrites and the inputs and weights, the soma with the weighted summation, and the axon with the activation function and output. We can stack multiple of these nodes side by side to form a layer. A layer can have as many nodes as you like, and these nodes can be arranged in different ways to make different types of layers that are specialised to do certain things. We'll cover this more shortly. Neural networks arise when we stack multiple of these layers together in a sequential, interconnected fashion, such that the outputs of one layer are the inputs of another, much like a brain. Here's a simple example called a feed-forward neural network, as all the inputs are resulting signals per se get fed sequentially forward towards the output. We typically call the first and last layer the input and output layer, respectively, and the hidden layers are in between. Already this is a very complex output, capable of creating and fitting highly nonlinear complex relations. It is the clever layering of non-linear outputs, one on top of another, with each layer progressively extracting a more and more subtle trend in how the inputs relate to the outputs that give this real power over a standard polynomial or linear model. The most important thing to realise is the weights and biases are the things that are unknown here, they are part of what defines the neural network. If we view the neural network as a black box, this whole setup is defined by what the inputs and outputs are, and then the neural network, defined by its architecture, layers, weights and biases. If we want to be able to use a neural network in applications, we must train it. Taking an example network, let's say we have 30 nodes across the four layers here, and every node is fully connected to the next layer's nodes, like so. This is already 200 weights and 24 biases if you do the calculation, so 224 learnable parameters. We need data in the form of the inputs and expected outputs for training. Due to the number of weights, neural networks tend to work best with large amounts of data, that is hundreds, thousands, if not millions of data points. With the increasingly data-driven, big data, high throughput driven world, it is no wonder this is attracting so much attention. I won't go into the training procedures for neural networks in this video, as the data splitting and mathematical calculus for this can get rather detailed and is best dealt with separately. Simple feedforward neural networks can already be used for applications involving a simple set of numerical inputs and outputs. If we want to examine more exotic inputs though, like images or sound, then we often need more specialised layers. One example is a convolution layer, giving rise to convolutional neural networks, which are good at analysing arrays of numbers, like an image. This is a whole other video in itself, but the underlying principle is based on a scanning-like motion. 
So let's say we have an image which we can transform into a grid of pixels or a grid of numbers. A convolution layer looks over a small part of the image, returning a number for that section. It then moves on to the next adjacent part of the image to scan, and so on and so on. The overall effect is for an inputted image, after each layer in the convolutional neural network, the image and output gets progressively more abstract, representing finer, almost hidden details being analysed. So if we wanted to predict whether someone has a disease or not from an MRI scan, then we can use a convolutional neural network for that. Alternatively, we can analyse DNA sequences. Chemically, DNA is a double helix bonded together by base pairs, adenine and thymine, and cytosine and guanine. We can write someone's genome in such a fashion, which can then be encoded into a matrix of numbers, analysed and correlated to whether someone has a particular disease or not. This can pick up particular gene sequences that cause certain diseases, and we call this bioinformatics. If we want to design a chemical molecule for a particular purpose, like a drug or energy material, then we can encode a chemical molecule in the form of a matrix that we can then feed into a neural network. Taking a water molecule, I can write each atom like so, and put a 1 where there is a bond and 0 where there isn't, and I have written water as a matrix which I can then feed in. Google DeepMind has explored convolution in process control for monitoring nuclear fusion reactors using plasma images too. The applications of neural networks really are endlessly diverse. So, you've now taken your first step into a technological tool that is already changing our everyday lives as we speak. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing and sharing it to anyone who might be interested.